Sir, yes, sir. Discipline is essential in the military, even in small things that civilians might find silly. Without discipline, units fall apart and bad things happen. However, good officers and non-coms also understand that when somebody fouls up, the punishment should be appropriate to the offense. Tonight, Larry Barker investigates the punishment that a young airman got for an infraction he committed, a punishment that a lot of people find hard to believe. It all started with the hat. What else can I say? <laughs> this camouflage hat ended your military career? Yes, sir. He was wearing his hat indoors in violation of Air Force instructions. Stephen Baca proudly served his country with the New Mexico Air National Guard. But last year, the forward march of senior airman Baca's military career took an abrupt about face. I was arrested. Uh, put in handcuffs, patted down. And you sat in a jail cell? Uh, yes, at the Kirtland Air Force Base uh, Security Police Headquarters. In the realm of military justice, the Air Force arrest of Stephen Baca can best be described as bizarre. Once the security police slapped handcuffs on the young guardsman, it was the beginning of the end of his military career. The date, April 9th. The scene of the crime, this Air Force based convenience store. Exhibit A, a cap. Dressed in fatigues, Airman Baca enters the store to buy a pack of gum. With security cameras rolling, the guardsman is confronted by a man in shorts here on the left who orders Baca to remove his hat. And he got up right in my face and said, take off your, take off your hat. And I was like, well, who, wait, who are you? I asked him to identify himself. I was like, well, who are you? And he asked, well, who you, who's your commander? In the Air Force, it's a matter of courtesy to remove your hat indoors. Even though Airman Baca did take off his military hat, the guy in shorts did not let up. I asked again, well, who's, who's your commander? And I just told him I work for the Air Guard. That, that's all I'm giving you. And if you want that information, you're going to have to go, go find it yourself because you're, you're not identifying yourself. And then he followed me outside of my vehicle. In the parking lot, the guy in shorts orders Baca to halt. And at that time, I was like, well, I, I got to get away from this guy. This guy's kind of crazy. You're trying to get away from this guy. What is he doing? He's blocking my departure. How so? Uh, he's standing behind my vehicle. So did you run into him then with your car? I backed out very slowly as to avoid him. To your knowledge, you didn't hit him with your car. I, uh, my knowledge, I did not hit him with my car. Baca returned to his unit. End of story, not quite. You see, this guy is not some civilian bully. He's Master Sergeant Bruce Mims with the Kirtland Security Police. Mims decided to teach Baca a lesson. In a criminal complaint, he said, quote, in all my years, I've never been disrespected like that, all over being asked to remove a hat indoors. Mims rounded up an Air Force police posse and hauled the 23-year-old guardsman off to jail. I was arrested for assault, fleeing the scene of an accident, and the two military charges of insubordination and failure to obey an order. Baca was detained and then released. The case was then turned over to the National Guard for discipline. What really happened here that day? Did Airman Baca disobey orders and commit crimes? And did he refuse to remove his hat? Even though Baca did take off his hat, what was the authority of Sergeant Mims to issue orders? Colonel John Kabenik took over as Kirtland's Air Base Wing Commander in December. Well, the Airman says that the Master Sergeant uh, did not identify himself. He asked who he was. He was dressed in shorts and a pullover shirt. He says he didn't know who the guy was. It still does not excuse the airman from not having taking his hat off when asked. I mean, it is drilled into our minds from day one that you don't wear your cover indoors. You do see that the airman, he did remove his cap. Right, what it does in chill is how many times the, the master sergeant asked the airman before that to remove his cap. Baca was then arrested. On these facts, it's hard to say that justice was done in, in this case. New England College of Law professor Victor Hansen serves on the National Institute for Military Justice, an organization dedicated to promoting fairness in the military. We interviewed him by satellite. In practical reality, I mean, as a former prosecutor, military prosecutor, if somebody took this case to me into these facts, I would say we're not, you know, we're not going to waste our time with this. This is, this is nonsense. I think it's a, you know, kind of a situation where things have gotten out of control and you know, it smacks a little bit of railroading this 
this individual out of the Air Force. It gets worse. While Baca was sitting in an Air Force jail cell, his unit departed for a required training exercise in West Virginia. Because Baca was not there, the guard charged him with being AWOL. Colonel Joe Martinez is the Air Guard Wing Commander. You think charging him with AWOL was appropriate by the guard? It is, uh, it is within the uh, agency's uh, right to do that, yes. If he's incarcerated and misses a movement, he is technically AWOL. The National Guard later decided to pull the plug on Stephen Baca's military career. Citing a pattern of misbehavior, Baca was slapped with a general discharge. Among his misdeeds, the cap caper. What did the airman do wrong? The airman was in violation of Air Force regulations in wearing his headgear indoors. And is that a serious offense in the Air Guard? It's a serious offense in the military. How serious of an offense is it to wear your cap indoors? Oh, it's, it's just a very minor infraction. I mean, most people, you know, oftentimes you forget. And uh, I've often reminded people to take their cover off, remove their cover indoors. It's, it's not a serious thing. Retired Air Force Colonel Jack Martinez had a distinguished military career, including a tour of duty at the Pentagon. He was Stephen Baca's ROTC instructor at Valley High. We interviewed him by satellite. The way it went down was an overreaction all the way around to discharge a, uh, a young man trying to make his way in life, and true and a good job as far as I was concerned in the Air Force's the time that I knew him, that uh, it was uh, an injustice in that respect. Albuquerque attorney Reber Bolt serves on the military law task force. When our government is treating people bad, we should know about it. And our government, in the form of the Air Force, is treating Airman Baca bad. After making the transition from senior airman to civilian, Stephen Baca is getting his life back together. And what does the guy who started it all have to say? Well, nothing. Air Force Master Sergeant Bruce Mims did not respond to our request for comment. Larry Barker, KRQE News 13. There's another interesting aspect to all this. Colonel Joe Martinez, the Air Guard Wing Commander, had his own disciplinary problems. He was arrested for drunken driving in 2005 and 2006, shortly after a stern warning that DWI by Guard members would not be tolerated and that repeat offenders could be discharged. One of the charges against Colonel Martinez was dismissed because police did not show up for his trial. He pled guilty to the second. But that charge was also later dismissed after he completed what the judge directed. Now, Martinez was disciplined by the guard, but he does not say how. In fact, last year, he was promoted to wing commander. In a statement to the Albuquerque Journal last year, Colonel Martinez said, quote, We understand that just like citizens out there in the community, airmen are going to make mistakes. Our people are our most valuable resource and we're going to give them the opportunity to rehabilitate themselves, I was given that opportunity." End quote. 